I think several studies, most in mice, but more of them now coming in humans, showing that uh, diabetics or type 2 diabetics and obese subjects have less rich microbiota, so the diversity is less. And with that diversity, it seems to ha have more bad or pathogenic bacteria in their, in their stool. So it's a two-edged sword. On one hand, the diabetics have less diversity, so less bacteria that can make beneficial products for you. And the second one is that they have more bad bacteria, more pathogenic uh, bacteria that can invade or produce endotoxin to create uh, inflammation and worsen your diabetes. I think the microbiota are at this stage much more of a biomarker than a therapeutic. Um, so what we see now is that um, we are able uh, from, from relatively large cohorts to identify fecal bacteria that predict diabetes. Um, the problem however is that uh, we think that the small intestinal bacteria might be more important uh, because of physiology but it's very hard to get them there uh, to get biopsies or to study them in large groups. So for now, indeed, the biomarkers come from fecal samples and they do show association or predictive value for diabetes. But it's very likely that small intestinal bacteria might be more powerful. I think we have to make the distinction between the common or con conservative kind of antibiotics like the lactobacillus that we used to know and the new probiotics that are coming from based on the on the microbiota leads. So there is some evidence that, that uh, the conservative or the old-fashioned uh, probiotics have beneficial effects. The, uh, it, it's, there is some beneficial short-chain fatty acid production, there is some beneficial immunomodulatory effect. When you compare it to the new probiotics that come from leads from the, the bacterial microbiome, they might be much more powerful, but also might, might um, uh, request a different approach. So basically, maybe not over the counter, but via the doctor's prescription, maybe in different dosages. Um, so I think probiotics, yes, there is some evidence for them, but the new generation probiotics coming from these bacterial microbiota leads might be very powerful and might really make a difference in terms of patient treatment uh, in any disease where the microbiome seems to be involved. You can already grasp the future here of, of companies together with public health and, and physicians and basic scientists to say, okay, we're going to make sure that what is the, the level of or the hierarchy of the microbiome in any disease. And probably it's in the order of 10 or 20 percent in metabolic disease and it's a little bit less in an autoimmune disease. But we're starting to grapple that problem. And I think uh, because everybody's so aware that the microbiome plays a role, I think it's really, really an intriguing time now. Mm -hmm.